All right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini episode 35. And I knew that one off the top of my head this time. We didn't have to discuss which episode we were on, I remember. I guess that helps when we do two in a week, then we know it what episode we're on. <laughs> it helps, it helps. Um, and before we get into today's topics, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all the fun stuff when it comes to this podcast. We are getting a lot of traction. Um, I think also part of that is because the season is starting up. So people are like more interested in this stuff now when it's like holiday time, they don't care. They're like, okay, I don't, I don't want to be around this stuff because it makes, it reminds me of the stuff I should be doing when I'm not doing it. <laughs> so, uh, but we're getting some really good, really good questions and like a lot of really good questions are coming in. So that's very good. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to go through, um, questions, Q and A's that you guys have sent in. We'll go through as many of them as we can, um, but go through them as thorough as we can too. We, we can always come back and, and answer them on the ends of other topics and stuff too. Um, but before we get into all of that, how's your weekend? I, I just have to say your hair looks really pretty today. So I don't know what you did, Thanks. but it looks beautiful. <laughs> and your I lashes, you got, like you got lashes. Yeah, and you got lashes, some lashes too. on this morning. I'm trying to not go back and do eyelash extensions yeah. because yeah, I yeah, cannot yeah. lay there for an hour and a half, two hours. I just don't have the time nor the patience. So I'm trying to see if I could start doing them myself. This is the first time I did them, and I, I think I did pretty good. No, what do you they think, did, John? No, You're the they did good. Excellent. They did good. Okay. Did you just do regular, like, glue-on ones? What did you do? They just regular strip yeah. lashes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is what I do when my husband's out of town. My husband was in Wasatch mm. yesterday for a 24-hour trip, so I was not feeling the best. I told you guys I'm, I think I'm getting my period back and things like that, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. just, like, dead tired all weekend, so I did nothing, and I just watched YouTube videos, and like I said, I'm trying to not go back and get eyelash extensions, but yeah. we did talk about on the last podcast how mm -hmm. a tan and lashes just kind of Absolutely. make you feel, feel yourself. So, Like, it's the first um, thing. I was like, oh, she yeah. looks so pretty. <laughs> I look alive. I know. <laughs> Seriously, lashes and eyebrows make such a huge difference when it comes yep. to your just looking like you're awake. You know, yeah. like that that alone. You should try Lashify. They're 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 intimidating at first, but once you get used to it, you try. <laughs> I should probably try again, but it's just yeah. like I have like I am just such like a one minute manager. Like even doing this this morning, I was like, oh. like I just. Well, I, I was. Even, that's I was. Yeah, I was intimidated by it as well. But the thing with the Lashify ones is like these. Like they stay on for a good amount of time. These I've had on for like four days. So they, awesome. you don't have to take them off. You know, awesome. and that that. I'm yeah, that's the biggest thing they say. And that, so they have different formulas when it comes to what you use. They have a uh, it's the charcoal adhesive one that's the one that's a long wear one and then they have a, a finisher which is called glass so if you okay. use that when you got the lashes on they will last like four or five days you know um okay well can you send me all of this and i will buy it and yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. You know what my biggest issue is, which I figured out from all these YouTube videos. I am a YouTube, like I am like a YouTube connoisseur. That's yeah, how I've learned too. like anything glam. Um, I think I put on too much glue. I think I add oh, too okay. much glue okay. than I think. And I don't, everybody's like, it gets tacky. I'm like, it never feels tacky. It feels like it's just like sliding all over my eyes. So I literally okay. did like the tiniest amount of glue this morning. I'm like, oh, it's tacky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is what everybody talks about. <laughs> yeah. So the difference with the Lashify is that you're actually putting the glue on your lashes like mascara. Okay. And then you put the lashes underneath your own lashes. These lashes are underneath my lashes yeah, on top. I'm going to try that again. Yeah. I'll try it again. And again, look on YouTube because I found the math, the best method to do this. I found from a girl that does them herself with Lashify. What she does is she uses the, the charcoal glue that I was talking about and she puts a layer on layer on, lets it dry for a minute, put another layer, another layer, does three layers before she puts her, her lashes on and puts the lashes in place. And that is what works. That Can you is send me works. that YouTube video too? <laughs> I think I have, I'm pretty sure I have it saved. Like I, I, I saw it, I don't know. This is during the pandemic when I started doing all this lash stuff, right? So um, I think that's back when I saved it, but I'm pretty sure I still have it in my saved videos. So oh, man, if I could do that, I would save myself so much money and so much time. time. I just need to learn how to do it. Yes. So, yes, I, yes. Will, I will try it again. I will buy it again and try it. <laughs> And, and, if you don't want, and I'm going to FaceTime you. I know, right? I, I know. <laughs> if you don't want to make the investment, because Lashify is more expensive. It's the most expensive one out there. But there's a reason, because they do last longer, you know. But um, if you don't want to make that investment in those, you can get the Falscara ones from the drugstore to practice, because they're cheap. Okay. Yeah, okay. you can go to CVS and get Falscara. And then that way, you can at least practice putting the lashes on. They don't stay as well. They're not as high quality when it comes to lashes and stuff like that. Yeah. But they're cheap, so you can practice. 
you know? I mean, I, I'm saving money anyway with not getting right. it done. So right. I would rather, like, I like to, like what Greg always says, Papa Bear, he's like, pra- like actually practice like you're going into battle, like how you would go into battle. Yes. So like, I want to use the things that I would use yes. for everyday use. So. Right. Well, they have a starter kit. So it gives you the kit with the... <laughs> With the um, the Lashify uh, glue and the, the setting, um, the glass thing I talked about, and it gives you the gossamers, and you have to have the, the specific tool, the uh, tweezer, because if you don't have that okay. tweezer, it does. You're, you're going to have a really hard time if you don't have their little their their wand tweezer thing they have. It's it's shaped it's like, like shaped differently. Yes, yeah, okay. you're going to have a really hard time if you don't have that. That is okay. key. That that tool is key. So you know. <laughs> I will report back. <laughs> the things we didn't plan on talking about on today's podcast, but no. I think I think girls will probably find this this interesting too because oh, I mean sure. we're, we're all trying to we're we're gym rats. We want to look decent, but we don't have to spend a lot of time on doing this stuff, right? I get told all the time that like my makeup looks fantastic and everything. I'm like I literally take five minutes to do my makeup in the morning, five minutes, and I'm done, you know, because I've just got it down to a science. I do my brows. I've got my lashes on for five days, and I'm good. Like <laughs> that's all you need if you have good brows and lashes. You just need a little bit of face makeup, that's right. and you look alive again. So thank that's you. right. For the- <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so, um, so other than that, so you've been home alone this weekend. So you've been playing with with uh, with lashes. So, um, how's uh, <laughs> how's prep going? Are you doing good so far? Yeah, I think I'm actually hitting like. I told Drew last night when I picked him up from the airport, I feel like I'm finally in like fat loss. He's like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, I'm just like dragging. I'm tired. Uh, I'm starting to like yeah. feel it a little bit. Nothing yeah. crazy. Just like feeling like, you know, I'm in prep cardio is kicking yeah. my butt, but it feels good. It feels good to be cutting. I'm definitely leaning down. The scale's not reflective of that, but that's normal for me. So yeah. I just stay in my lane yep. and um, yeah, just, just enjoying it. I'm getting ready for a really big trip. We leave Tuesday night to head to Florida so I could be at my gym for a couple of days and check mm. on them have some meetings with my staff, get my hair done for my hairdresser. So I'm excited for that. And then we're going to Clash next weekend. I have uh, two girls competing in Clash, one competing in a different show in a different state. Drew's got two amateurs. Um, We have a bunch of pros there. It's going to be a wild weekend. But yeah, I'm wondering how big girl power is going to be because Wasash was huge. I was like, I didn't get a chance to watch. So I was at a local show yesterday and it's right down the street from my house. But the actual venue that it's in, there's zero signal, none. Like, like so bad that like you know you get the little SOS up on your phone, <laughs> like that's how bad it is. So that's I the worst. It's terrible. I couldn't keep up with anything. I had no idea what was going on. I had, I had one of my makeup clients was late, and I couldn't get a hold of her because I couldn't get the freaking messages to go through. And I'm just like, oh, yesterday was rough. Yeah. <laughs> and today like, is day and age. That's uh, unacceptable to be. In I know. Uh, and I'm data. just like. like like yeah. I literally had to go outside, like outside, outside, in order to get my phone to work. Yeah, that's phone serious. Phone. I was like, I can't. I'm like, this is this is. I'm like, so then the so I had I, so I had like a bunch of makeup clients in the show, and I had one girl who had actually worked with um, with her suit or makeup all that kind of stuff, and she ended up winning the overall. Awesome. So, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I have 4% left on my battery because my phone is just, it's just eating my battery from trying to search for a signal in the venue the whole day. And I'm like, please just hold out so that I can get pictures and video at the end of this show. <laughs> so I was like, please, please. I had like 2% when I left the bit, the venue. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> do you have an external hard drive or dr- well, charger? Normally, yeah. Normally yeah. I do, but I just didn't bring it with me. And I just wasn't thinking. I mean, it's a short show. It's a local show. So I really didn't think it was going to be a big deal. Usually it's not. You know, um, I was, the show itself was uh, from three o'clock because it's just women. It was like from three o'clock till five. It was short, but I was there doing hair and makeup all day. And the whole time my phone is just trying to search for a signal search in there. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> Anytime I'm picking like the purse I want to wear on show day, it has to be big enough to carry my my hard drive or yeah. my, my battery. Like, cause yeah. we, we go through battery, like on yep. show day, we're taking photos, we're using the light, you know, our clients are texting yep. us this issue. So that's yep. like number one on the coaches list. You got to have your back. Absolutely. <laughs> I have my, I have my one, my one Dolce Gabbana purse that I use all the time because that's what it, it it's built perfect size for me. For to sure. Fit everything I need there. It's like, it's perfect. I was like, yep. I can fit my charger in there. I can fit my phone in there. I can fit my lip gloss. <laughs> like yep. I'm good. I'm good. Competitor, got everything. Competitor's lipstick. Yes. Got uh-huh. for the competitors. Yep. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Arsenal. It's what all in there. 
<laughs> yeah. So now, for real. My, okay, we're getting off on a tangent now, but we're, we're, I've been wearing like my parachute pants. Everybody loves when I wear the parachute. Oh pants yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a tight top, but like I've been looking for parachute pants with pockets in it. So three weeks ago when we were at Girl Power, I was like, "What do you need? Hairspray? Got it. What do you need? Yeah. Gloves? Got it." I was just like, cool. <laughs> but I looked cute. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I feel like that's a coach hack. I'm, I'm tapping Absolutely. into the coach. <laughs> it's coach. funny you say that because I actually wore a pair of those last night for dinner. I didn't wear them during the show, but I have a black band. They've got pop. They've got pockets. Same thing. I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right. That would actually be a good idea, right?" Teasing comb. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got this. We got, got this. all the things. Because <laughs> normally I have my I have my bag on me. The my cuties bag that just carries everything. So I've always I always say I'm, I've got the mom bag. So I've got everything in there all the time. I've got I've got freaking band aids and like hairspray and like Detail. glue and like we got Earring scissors. Bags. Yeah, scissors. Everything. Yeah, everything. Yep. If you need it, I've got it. You know, yep. like <laughs> aspirin. You know, whatever yep. you need. It's in there. (laughs) I got you. (laughs) Yep. I'm like, I got the mom bag. We're good. (laughs) Okay. So our our athletes are like our little hens on show day. That's right. Come on, what do we do? (laughs) That's right. I'm like, just come find me. I I can take care of it one way or another. I got something that'll work in here. It'll work. It'll work. Safety pins, you know, all the sewing kit, all of it. number one. Safety Mm -hmm. pins are number one. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) but yeah, so, um, you know, same thing on on my end when it comes to the prep, like I just, I I don't know. I'm like, I I said, I finally clicked that, clicked over that thing, that, that drive, you know? So like, even so yesterday again was a rest day. This is the hardest thing for me in prep right now because my training is only four days. Right. Right. So the hardest thing for me is usually prep. I'm like, okay, I gotta go to the gym. Okay. I gotta go to the gym. Okay. I gotta go to the gym. It's like yesterday was a rest day and I'm like, what do I do with myself right now? And then on those days you have to pick up your knee knowing that you don't have training. Help yeah. Help yeah. Which is why I put, put that yesterday because I had the show. So I was like, right. I know I'll be, I'll be on my feet all day. So it's not a big deal. You know right. what I mean? So, right. but still, I'm just like, I feel like something's missing. I feel like I'm not working hard enough. You know what I mean? Like you get that feeling. And like, finally, like I was saying, my period this month was, was so heavy. Finally, like I was still like kind of, kind of spotting a little bit yesterday. Like it's gone finally today for the first time in a wow. week. My, my, wow. my period, my period doesn't last that long ever. Yeah. So it's those vitamins. It's those, it's those vi- vitamins. I'm telling you, I've got there. I think they're coming in today, actually, because I ordered them. So, but I'm like, we're going back on them because I normally have three day periods, not week long periods. So we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> it makes such a huge difference, man. So yeah. I finally started feeling like starting to feel normal on like Friday, you know, cause that's when it was really starting to dissipate. And then, um, so now I'm like, I, I feel like once I, so today, today I'll train. So I didn't yesterday. So I think sure. today's going to be my first like real, like, okay, I feel good kind of training. training day. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's what I get from it. So that's, that's the plan. <laughs> I, I train on Sundays now too. I used to always yeah. take Sundays as a rest day. I used to love Sundays as a rest day. Now I love it as a training day because Mondays are so crazy for me. So it just gives me one day in the gym where Same. no one's blowing me up. There's no, you know, check-ins or anything like that. So I like love a Sunday like session. Well, I the other thing, yeah. I want for how long I want. And the thing with Sundays is that the gyms are dead. You yeah. know, there's nobody in there. So you have full reign. I love training on Sundays. I've always had Sunday as like a, a major training day. I always do legs or glutes or something on Sunday because of that. Like, it's like I get the gym to myself almost, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and you can just really zone in and, and get in there and all that stuff. I actually, I typically, and this is before my training went to four days. I typically do train on Mondays, but now that my, my training's down to four days, I typically don't on Mondays now because Mondays okay. are really busy, really busy gym days. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, I'd rather just, like you said, I've got most of my clients check in, check in on Mondays. So I'd rather focus on client and work stuff. And then Tuesday, I can get back to doing normal because even then, it's still busy in the gym, but it's not as bad as Monday. Mondays in the Correct. gym are worse. Yeah, and I'm like, that's exactly I, I just what wanna, I do now. Yeah, I just want to get my, I want to get my workout in and I don't want to have to go around people to do that. You know what yep. I mean? So I've, I've been able to structure it a little differently and actually really like that. So Me too. some Me people too. get more motivation when there's more people like, I, <laughs> not. I need, I just need, I need my space. Leave me alone so I can get done and, and focus and focus yeah. on everything. That's one of the things that I'm having, um, to communicate with my, my new clients. Cause we, cause we were restructuring training and stuff like that. Right. So I'm restructuring their training as well. And I'm like, listen, you, these, if you don't go into the gym and focus on these exercises, they're going to feel like nothing. I said, you need to focus, mm-hmm. like mentally be super connected. Cause if you're not, you're not training hard enough. You know what I mean? And that's, that's really, it makes a huge difference. That mental connection to your training makes a huge difference as far as yeah. how, how it gets executed. 
Yeah. And it's hard to teach that through a computer. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Well, I, I can always tell this when people actually start to do that, they're like, but what does that mean? Yeah. And then I'll it, describe it to them and they'll go into the gym and then they'll come back to me like, oh, that's mind and muscle connection. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Like if you're scrolling on your phone in between sets, you are not connected to that left yep. at all. You're not yep. connected. I'm sorry. Yep. I would argue that with you all day, every day. You have yep. to stay very present in the moment in that workout. And when people actually do, they really do feel that difference. There's a, there's a really big, you know, uh, connection when you close your eyes, simply mm -hmm. just close your yeah, eyes, close your eyes. On what you're feeling. or touch, touch the muscle that you're working. Like that's yeah. something I do all the time is I actually touch my glutes when I'm working yeah. my glutes. Cause you can connect to it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was making me laugh the other day. I was in the gym. Um, I'm doing posing for one of Greg's clients, right? So I sent him, um, I sent him videos and pictures of, of the stuff that I just done with her at that session that day. And um, he called me while I was in the gym because he wanted to thank me and like all that kind of stuff for the work and everything. And I was like, I couldn't, I was in the gym and I couldn't flip over my, my headphones fast enough to answer the call. I'm like, I'm like pushing buttons. I'm like, shit. So, <laughs> so I finished it up and I was like, I, I was like, I'm sorry. I tried to call him back. He had a do not disturb, but I tried to call him back. I'm like, I'm sorry. I was Typical. Trying to click, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was trying to call you back, but I had it stuck on my headphones. I couldn't figure out how to click over to the, to the phone. And he's like, no, just focus on your training. Just go focus on your training. I just wanted to say thank you for your work. I was like, cool. Awesome. I was like, I'm going to focus on my training. I was, like, yep. I'm, I was like, I was getting in the zone. I just walked to the gym. I was getting into the zone. I was like, oh, shit. Like, like, right. You out. should have had your phone on do not disturb. I know. I know. I need to do that. <laughs> what I do, so I have different settings. We talked about this. I have different settings. Which I have done now. Since yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a work yep. setting. So I have a work yep. setting yep. and there's certain notifications that will come through on the work setting. But So it's not, that's what I typically do. I put it onto the work settings. So then if it's something emergency or that I need, it will come through. And the thing with the phone calls too, is people don't usually call me. I mean, just <laughs> usually it's text. I don't get a lot of phone calls. I think most people are like that nowadays. Um, and I have the, I have the spam feature. So like, if they're not my contacts, it automatically goes to my, my voicemail. So I don't have to worry about it. So if it's somebody that's in my contacts, it's somebody I know it's going to come through. It's going to, it's going to hit me on the, on regardless of what I've got it on as far as my setting on my phone. So yeah, most of the time it's not an issue. Most of the time it's not a problem, but <laughs> that was your friendly reminder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, going, going through all this stuff, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's amazing how much the, the mental connection makes a huge difference in what you're doing just across the board we've talked about it with diet too but specifically in the gym that's that's where you get your most bang for your buck because when you're when your brain brain is connected to it <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah yep. yeah so you've got girl power coming up this coming week you got a big big travel week i don't have a travel week until pittsburgh pittsburgh's the next one i'll be traveling to so okay. um and i'm going to do all my live stuff there i'm assuming they have a live stream at pittsburgh so i'll probably be doing my spotify and then um like go live with a with a recap or something, a prejudging or something along that line. So perfect. I, I love being in person for these things when I can be, and I'm like, I'll get as much live footage as I can. But you know, if they've got their own live stream, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. Yeah, they usually know? don't allow it. Yeah, yeah. Nor do I want to. Like, I want the promoters to be able to make money off of their stuff. You know what I mean? So when I'm going there and doing this stuff, I, I'm doing it as a as a add on. You know, right. not a. I don't want to take away from you. I sure. want to help help you. Like I, you know, the, the live stream for the Arnold this year was free, but in years past, it's, it's not been. So I tell people, it's like, go buy the live stream and then listen to my commentary with it, you know, and then that sure. way you get the best of both worlds. And I do that whenever I go to shows that have paid live streams, you know, I'm like, go buy their live stream, then listen to me um, along with the live stream, and then you'll get, you'll get the best of both worlds. And plus, I mean, their live stream is going to be better than mine as far as streaming from my phone Quality. anyways. Right. So, you know, that again, you get the best of both worlds and you get to hear what's going on from an actual viewer standpoint. Yes. And you get to see it too in a better quality than right. my phone. You know, good, so. good quality, good angles. Yeah, uh, Gilco was at the Wasatch, and I did the rally stream. It was like twenty-one bucks. It's yeah, nothing. yeah, um, and yeah. To help support them and help support That's the right. show. And you know, for everybody watching, you know, for especially new time competitors, if you don't have like a show in your local area, watch the live streams of these mm -hmm. big shows. And watch like I watched the NPC. I had nobody in the NPC yesterday, but I continue to watch and learn yep. and study what they're picking. Yep. Um, and that's a really great way to study the sport, you know, especially if you can't get out to a major show. So that's a, a yep. great way to support the promoters as well. This is a business at the end of the day. And then right. in order to keep these shows going for us as athletes, we also need to give back to the sport in this simple way of purchasing live stream and tickets yeah. and things like that. 
Yeah. You know, it's simple that it was it made me laugh yesterday. I was sitting in the audience. And again, I've, I only had the one girl in the whole show, show yesterday where I did anything more than just makeup for them. And so one of the one of the girls in the audience, she's seen me at posing clinics and stuff. She came up to she's like, what are you doing at the small show? <laughs> I was like, it's local. Yeah, it's local. I live, I live five minutes down the street. I was like, I'm going to support regardless of if I have yeah. clients or not, I'm going to support. Plus like, like, you know, I try to get as close to the judges as I can. So I was sitting right behind the judges at the show. And what was cool for me too, is I'm, I'm watching and listening. What people, what a lot of people don't understand. I see this question a lot. Like they're asking, you know, who's on the judging panel at certain shows and stuff like that. And I get that to an extent, like you want to know who the head judge is and everything like that. But you got to realize these judges all talk to each other. It's not like a one person is making this decision, you know? So I sat there and like for the overall comparison, it was funny because like there was four girls in the overall for, for bikini. And I pretty much knew it was narrowed down to two of them. And they looked very, very similar too. They're, you know, to, uh, they have very similar shapes. They're blondes. They're in blue suits. They both look very, very similar, right? But the girl that I worked with, um, she was a little softer. Her conditioning wasn't as good, but her shape was better, and she had better upper outer glute. The other girl was a little bit um, harder, but she had rib cage, really bad rib cage showing in her front pose, and her upper outer glute was non-existent. So, you know, in the back of my head, I'm yeah, I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, I could see it going either way. I really could see it going either way. And so I'm watching the judges in front of me talking to each other. And I could see like three of them, their numbers were 70 and 74. Like three of them had number 74, four of them had number 70. So it was very close because they were trying to go between shape and conditioning. And they ended up all conversing together and they went with number 70, right? And, and I agree with that. You know, even though she was, she was a touch softer than the other girl, she had better shape. She had a better overall polish. She had a better overall look. Um, there were things that number 74 could have done that would have made her look a little bit better as well. So, um, but in general, like if you're going up to a national show, the girl that won the overall, all she had to really do was come in a couple pounds tighter and she would have, been, she would have absolutely placed higher than the other girl for sure. Um, but that would have been no question. Correct. Right. The other girl, it's, she needs to build her upper outer glutes and she needs to be careful of, like I said, she was really rib cagey, really rib cagey. Um, and I'll be honest, like she won her class and the girl that came in second, I actually thought the girl in second should have won her class. So just for those, those couple of reasons. Right. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it comes down to those little tiny things. And that was a really good example. Even though this was a small local show, it was very competitive between the two of them. It was very competitive. You know, and both of them, I think, would do relatively well with a few tweaks at the national level, you know. Right. So it's like you, you can go into a show where there's 20 competitors and you can have three or four girls that are really, really good. Uh, it just you, you can't you can't go to a show thinking you're going to win the whole thing because there's only 20 girls there. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, it's no, just, not at all. You never knew who else is showing up. That's right. That's right. And 20 I, really competitive people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. Are. Yep, absolutely. And that's how I felt it was. There was it was so funny because like it was like the show of the blondes. Like there was all it was like all blondes in bikini. It was crazy. Which is I was, it was yeah. very weird. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is so weird. Every single class where it was like a couple of girls battling for that first place spot, it was it was blondes. It was like I was I was I haven't seen that in, I don't even know when. Like I, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen different. it in wellness. I've seen it in wellness, but not in not a bikini. I was like, this is really weird. Yeah. Interesting. So was, and they all look great. Again, great shapes. Um, overall, like very good conditioning. Um, nobody was really off, you know what I mean? Like you, sometimes you go into a show and there's just, some, just like you're picking from what you got, but that wasn't sure. the case here. That wasn't the case here. There was like, there was like four girls in the whole show that looked again, very similar, all lawns. Um, one of them, one of them had a pink suit, but the other three had blue and all three, all four of them could have competed against each other, like in the different high classes. And, and I could have make it, made an argument for any of them. For any of them. Overall. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. those are the fun shows, though. Those are the ones where you're, you know, the little bit of the nail biters and, you know, not like a true first place that comes out. You know, it's like, yes, um, not yeah. fun when you're the coach. And you're the center, <laughs> yes, but it right. <laughs> right. Well, and that was the thing. I'm like, you know, I'm sitting there. And this is what we're talking about. You can always learn, you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching how the judges are talking to each other and what they're talking about and how they're choosing who's going to be the overall. It wasn't just, a, OK, we like this girl. Well, that's, sure. not, that's not what it was. They were all trying to determine because they, they were split. They were really split. So they're yeah. trying to determine who was, who had the best of, of what they were looking at, you know? So well, anyway, it makes cool. it interesting. It sure does. It sure does. And that's why you get to go to shows. Yes. <laughs> that's why you go to yes. even the small local shows. You go to the shows regardless because there's always Absolutely. people that come out. 
So yes. you just never know. So yes. with that, let's transition over into questions. Like I said, we have a lot of them. So we'll just kind of go right down the list. We'll start from the top and just go down and, and we'll get through as many of them as we can. And ladies and gentlemen who are watching this, feel free to send in more questions and we'll just keep adding to the list. And when we get to it, we'll, we'll answer it, you know? So um, let's show this one. So I have a question. Do y'all stay with your coaches in off season or does the client basically kind of do their own thing? How does that work with y'all? So go ahead. You start on this one. Um, I mean, for me as an athlete and for the athletes on my roster, yeah, absolutely. I stay with my coach in my off season. I mean, I would argue that that's the most important time of your journey to be with a coach. Um, mm -hmm. In the off season, I always say is, is where the champion is made. Um, yep. It's really dependent on how well you follow your reverse diet with how much body fat you pack on after a show. Um, the off season is to make improvements. You know, yep. I don't like to even say off season. We're always in season. It's just, are we eating a little bit more food or less food? Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I think it's very, very important to be working a coach through all seasons of this sport, especially the off season, because if you are truly committed to, you know, trying to really progress and or get a pro card and or, you know, go to the Olympia, then you should be working with the coach to make sure that you're getting that feedback each show, working on that feedback in your off seasons and coming back improved. Mm -hmm. um, where a lot of girls go wrong is they don't work with a coach in the off season, then they reach out to a coach when they're ready to prep. Not only does that put the athlete at the disadvantage, it puts the coach at a disadvantage. Right. I mean, a coach really gets to know you and your body to a T in that off season and put you in the best place possible for a prep. So um, yes, I, I definitely think that working with a coach in the off season is crucial to success. And I would, yeah. I work with a coach 24 seven. I've never not had a coach, even my very first coach. I've never been without a coach since I started this sport. Yep. And that's, um, I, I completely agree with you. And that's something that was not commonplace when I started. So most coaches just diet you for a show because you start with a coach when, you, when you're when you ready for a show and they just do 12 weeks and that's it. You're done. Um, so many, and some of them still work that way. Some of them still work that way where they just give you a prep and then you're on your own. A lot of yep. them still work One day that way. post show, they're gone. You can't hear from yep. them again. That's right. That's right. Yep. That's, um, that's the most important time to have a coach. Yeah. And this, yeah. and this was common, you know, this was not the, having a coach in the off season did not become common for the last, to the last four, four years, four years ish around there. Um, you know, and again, some of those old school coaches, they still work that way. Um, I don't know why they haven't kind of updated, but it's like, it was literally like you would buy an off season program or sure. you would buy an on season program. There was no in between. There was nothing that was continuity. Um, that's one of the things I do like about how fit body puts together their coaching programs. Cause you know, going into it that you're starting, usually you're starting in an off season program. And then once you've actually gotten to the point where you're ready to, to, to start prepping, they push you into an in season program, which is nice because it gives you that, okay, we have, there's no end date here. There's a, there's a continuity to this. We're going to keep doing this and keep doing this. Right. Um, but to be honest with you, that's, this is the first time me working with fit body is the first time that that's been a thing. Before that, every other coach, it was either your off season or your on season and you choose which one you're in. You know, there's no, there's no continuity, continuity to it. Um, so yes, since I've been with Jamie, I've been with Jamie the entire time. It's going on almost four years, it's four years of September is when it'll be four years. So I've been off season or on season with her the whole time, the whole time. There's not yeah. been a single month off. Um, but again, that's the first time I've ever done that. That's the first time I've ever done that. And I've been in this industry for 15 years. So, you know, that shows you how it's now it's becoming more commonplace. And it was not before. So, yeah. um, you know, and I think that a lot of coaches still work in the old school methods and everything they like do. that. Yeah. They do. I get a lot of uh, consultations and they tell me that, that they purchased an in-season and then mm -hmm. the day after the show, they reached out for their for their reverse diet macros and they go stuff and they're gone. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't pay for that. So mm -hmm. yeah, that there there are a lot, of, a lot of coaches that still work that way. And I agree. I love that FitBody kind of has that total, you know, mm -hmm. gear set up um, yep. because it is it's important if you if you are taking the sport seriously and you're not a one and done type athlete I think that mm -hmm. approach is needed but even if you are a one and done type athlete you need to be in your reverse diet I would argue yeah 
you are in prep and have Absolutely. that in the back of your mind. So, you know, I just did a consult with a girl a few days ago. She's signing up with me. We're going right into prepping for a show. She's about 21 weeks out. Mm -hmm. I told her, she, you know, she's kind of wanting to do the show just to see if she likes it. She's already pretty lean for health reasons, things like that. And I said, we're going to do this show, but then you also need to have in your mind, whether you love it or not, another 20 yes. weeks of reversing. Yes. And she's like, oh, okay. I'm glad you told me that because if I didn't like it, I just assumed I would get, was going to be done. Yep. So it, I love that. Just that total body, total mm -hmm. health approach. And yeah. this, it comes down to communication, you know, it does. The communication up front. It does. And, you know, and it, again, I, I don't fault people fault people for not knowing about this because it's not, it was not common practice until thing. the last few years, you know, and, and now we know better, you know, it's, like, right. it's one of those things. It's like, we know better. This, this is something that, and that again, I go back and I look at, I've made more progress on my physique in the last three and a half years than I have the entire time I've been in the sport because of the consistency, you know, I, I and the accountability. That. Yeah. I preach that the consistency, the accountability, making sure that you're sticking to a program is huge. Cause a lot of times what happens too, is that you get, okay, let's say you don't do your, do your coaching program into your off season. Well, then you just start doing what you feel like doing versus, mm -hmm. you know, versus doing something that's we targeted to toward, yeah. It. Targeted towards what your plan is. You know what I mean? Correct. Like you, you need to have, you need to have targeted goals. And a lot of times you don't know what that is as an athlete. You know, you don't know what that sure. is. I have a lot of a lot of women that are coming to me now that like competed, you know, five, 10 years ago, and they don't understand why I'm structuring their programming the way that I am now. And I have to sit there and tell them why, why we're doing it this way, because it's not the same thing as it was five, 10 years ago. It's Correct. completely different. You Correct. know, and we, we, we have to build you a certain way in order to make you competitive. And that was something we just never did. We just didn't yeah. do that. You know, <laughs> it's like, so all of a sudden Welcome it's like, this, right. All of a sudden this is like, this is really bodybuilding. You guys, it's really bodybuilding. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, but yes, so the long, long answer, the short answer to that is yes. On season and off season, improvement season, all of the seasons, all of them. Yes. <laughs> 24 so, seven. Yes. Next question is, do you do cardio and training in one session and which one should you do first? And we talked about this a little bit. Um, I do. I typically do both in the same session until I get into deep and prep and I've got long cardio sessions. Um, but I always do my training first and I do my cardio second. Um, we talked about this a little bit on the last podcast where I was like, well, maybe I should just start doing my cardio separately so I can get it in. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I've been doing it with my training. I just always go in and I hit my training first, um, use my, my energy for that. And then I go and I do my cardio because I feel like cardio it doesn't require as much. We're talking about focus. It doesn't require as much focus. Um, you just have to get the heart rate up. So. Um, that's what works for me. And then once we get over that like 25 to 30 minute mark with cardio, that's when I start splitting it into two sessions. Um, definitely split it. I definitely split it once it's at like 40 um, because then I can do 20 and 20. Um, and I find I push myself harder when I do it that way. Um, but usually, usually I'll still do one session up until it's 30 minutes. It just depends. Just depends. Uh, but usually that's what, how I structure it. So what about you? Yeah, um, I definitely agree with that. For me personally, I always do my cardio fasted first thing in the morning. That's how I love to do it, no matter how much I'm doing. If it's 16 minutes, usually I'm doing it all in one. Yeah. Um, if there are clients that have to do cardio and training at the same time, I do advise cardio post lift. Mm -hmm. um, I do macros per meal. So, you know, your pre workout meal and that. Um, nutrient timing should go towards your training um, so that you can actually put together the mind and muscle connection and things like that. Um, and then just like you said, you know, post-training, you're tired, especially when you're deep in season. So just mm -hmm. get, get on that cardio and push as much as you can. Um, and really, truly, it depends. You know, there's some clients that, that will break it up. Like if it's yep. over 30 minutes, maybe they do 20 minutes pre-session, then they do their lift 20 minutes post. At that point in a prep, if, it, if we're really, really deep, I just tell them that to structure it however they need to, to give 100% to each session, whatever 100% is for that day. But typically I would say, yes, cardio post-training would be ideal. Yep. And then to roll right into that, the next question is about um, fasted cardio. So interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, 
book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code cuties15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrise. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Ray's know that Mama Cutie sent you. So, you know, how important is it to do cardio fasted, what's considered fasted, and how many hours and calories? Um, I'm of the mindset it doesn't matter. Um, if you like doing fasted cardio, cool. If you don't, cool. You can do whatever you feel is best for you. I personally don't like doing fasted cardio. You just said you do. You know what I mean? So it's it's really a personal choice. I personally like to have a few meals in me. That's why I, I go to the gym. I tend to go to the gym around one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so I have a couple of meals in me at that point. I've got some, you know, blood flow going, all that kind of stuff. That's typically where my brain dips with my concentration at work too. You know, that two, two, eight, 2 p.m. kind of dip. So that's when I take advantage of going to the gym to kind of reset myself for the rest of the day. Um, so for me, that's what works. I don't need to do it fasted, um, but as I'll, I do do it post post training, so I am almost kind of fasted because my I ate you know a couple hours prior, basically. You know what I mean? So, um, what are your thought processes on this? It does not matter unless peds are involved. Yeah. So if you're on some sort some sort of fat burners, yohimbine, L carnitine, things like that, then it does matter. Mm -hmm. um, so if if you're if there are peds involved, then fasted is preferred and how it's going to be utilized the best. If you are natural or not using fat burners, then it truly does not matter. The only thing that matters is what time of the day can you push yourself the best. So for yeah. Sean, that's in the middle of the day. For me, if I try to do cardio in the middle of the day, I would not push myself. I cannot yeah. do cardio on a full belly. So that's just where you have to decide, again, if you're natural, um, mm -hmm. what time of day it works best for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is considered fasted to me is no food, just water, mm -hmm. caffeine, that's fasted. First yep. thing in the morning, get up, water, caffeine on the treadmill, no food, that's fasted. Um, and then as far as how many hours and calories, that's not a question for us. That's a question for you and your coach. You know, yeah. you need to ask them based off your goals right now, how, how you should be doing your cardio. Is it important for you to be doing it fasted or not? And how mm -hmm. many hours or calories? Yep. Yeah. And something that, um, one of my old coaches always kind of drilled into my head. So I did, I was told early on again, that fast that he had to do it in order to burn fat, which is not the case. Um, <laughs> it's just not, but I had one, one coach me who said, you know, I want you doing your, ca your cardio when you can push yourself hard enough to burn the calories that we want you to burn for cardio. You know, if you can't push yourself and you're just kind of going along, da, 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 it doesn't matter. You're just getting the time in, you're not getting the effort in, Correct. you know? So that's really what it comes down to more than anything. And for a lot of people, they can't, a lot of people can't push themselves when they're fasted, you know? So if yep. you can't push yourself when you're fasted, you need to eat something so you can push yourself, Correct. you know? So that's, that's me. I don't push myself when I'm fasted. I need to have food in me, you know? Yep. So and you know that. And that's how mm -hmm. you reflect it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So again, it comes back to it's not it's not important to do it fasted unless you have to do it that way for you to be better. You know what I mean? So that's Correct. the long and short of it right there. Um, next one, we're just again going to go down this down the line. Um, this is actually one that ties into what we were just talking about, too. So let's go ahead and show this one. Um, recovering ED clients wants to compete. What are your thoughts and advice on this one? So what are your thoughts and advice on um, eating disordered clients that want to come into bodybuilding? I mean, it depends. I will, I've had many consultations with girls with history of ED and I first ask them a few tough questions. You know, where are you at with the ED? Um, are you recovered from the ED? Um, mm -hmm. what, what strategies and tools did you do to recover from the ED? Um, and then, you know, if girls are saying that they're in the ED currently, I would not advise any kind of contest prep. Mm -hmm. I think that that can stir up some things and you know i i would rather you work on yourself first yep. bodybuilding to me though for a lot of ed clients is a saving grace you know it does Correct. give you a way to learn how to eat and how to fuel your body properly and how you're going to look with food in you mm -hmm. but you can't just go from one extreme to the other that's where i would really highly recommend a therapist mm -hmm. um i love referring people to celeste strains turk yeah um she is fantastic with competitors and ed clients she has saved probably about five to eight of my clients in their mm -hmm. lives and the way that they approach food um so really at that point, it just comes down to where that person is at in their journey with ED. And 
I always say number one is health and protecting the mental space. So if they are a few years, you know, and they have been eating and tracking food and it's not triggering for them, then I will absolutely take them on through a contest prep Mm -hmm. with the caveat that competing might stir up some of those, those thoughts and those behaviors. But that's why it's important for me to know if they have the tools readily available so that when those thoughts do come up, they know what they need to pull from their toolbox in order to help them. And of course, me too. I have to be equipped for that. Part of being a coach is listening where they're at mentally and meeting them where they're at. It's very, very hard though. But I've known many women that have very severe cases coming from ED and bodybuilding now saves them. And these women now eat more than me. Like they are people you eat yep. high amounts of food yep. and look amazing. So mm-hmm. it's actually very funny. I was doing some research on this and people with ED tend to be able to consume a lot more food yeah. once they do start truly tracking. It's yep. very, very interesting. Um, yeah. So yeah, it just, it depends, but that yeah, would be what I look at. Well, it's funny that you just said that because I have a girl that just signed on this week. Same, same scenario. You know, she was actually with a coach prior to me who, um, slid her back into old habits and dieted her away to nothing basically for her last show. And since then she's been coaching herself and trying to bring her calories back up and all that kind of stuff. And then when she saw I was coaching, she's like, Oh, I've been following you forever. I just felt like this was this, this was like meant to be kind of thing. So she starts telling me what she's eating and she's eating like, like 3000, close to 3000 calories a day. And she's still like filling out more and more and more. And I'm just like, so she's going into a show in a couple of months. I'm putting her into it because she wants to work on her posing and presentation. And I was like, this is great. So we can feed you into it. We can give you even more. I was like, you can, you can keep adding more weight. You're good, you know? And currently she's like 13 pounds up from what her first stage weight was. And she's still too lean right now. She looks better. So, yeah, she looks better. We need to get her. And I was like, I want to get you up another five, five pounds. You know what I mean? Like seriously. And then God, that's like a got, dream situation for you. Right? right? I'm like, let's just all the food, all the food. Yeah. Um, and then she's got a very good, healthy mindset too. Like she's, she's 41 and she wants to win a pro card by the time she's 50. So she's in this for the long haul. She doesn't want to just like do this to try to, to, to say, okay, I'm going to get back on this diet. You know what I mean? It's more about, she wants, and she said that she's like really going into this lifestyle of bodybuilding has saved me from my, my issues that I had before, you know, and just going through and talking to her about all the things that she's done. I was like, damn, this girl is working hard. <laughs> I was like, yeah. shit. I was like, all right. Yeah, no, I love, I, and I told her, I said, I have no problem putting you into the show in a couple of months. I said, because we can feed you even more. I said, that's yeah. great. You know? And at, like you said, I'm like, she's like, I think, her, I think she said her high day was like 2,800 calories or something like that. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I was like, but yeah, it's really cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually really excited to help her because I see so much potential in her frame too. Now that we know we can get her food really high. She loves to lift. She loves to lift heavy, all those kinds of things. So I'm like, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to shape her frame differently and really give her that, give her that, that satisfaction that she's looking for from that. And then when you think about this too, Issa Pacini, Miss Olympia, she has, is very open about the fact that she had an ED when she, before she started bodybuilding and look at her now. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's definitely, and I agree. I think what happens a lot of times is it helps give people control over that, you know, and knowing how to manage it so that they don't feel like they're a slave to it anymore, but they feel like they can actually manage it for a healthy lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and listen, a form of ED is a form of, you know, something that's going on psychologically. So if you're going to have it, replace it with a healthy habit, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, like I would rather replace it with tracking macros and counting macros and then becoming obsessed with that, but actually absolutely body properly with nutrient dense whole foods than the latter. Yep. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, here's a good one too. Would you be able to speak about preventing lower abdominal distension on stage if you can prevent it to the best of your ability? So I know you've had issues with this yourself. I know I have as well. So what are some of your strategies that you've employed? Well, the only time I had issues with this was digestionally, Mm -hmm. like when I was having a digestional issue with Tampa Tampa Pro last Mm -hmm. year. Um, But overall, no. I tend to have a very tiny waist, thank God. Mm -hmm. Um, But I work with a lot of clients with this, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, try – being moms, um, yep. definitely are the number one for this master's clients. Uh, so think things like that. Um, I have taken a lot of time to study this. Um, mm-hmm. my aunt, the physical therapist, when I first started getting into competing, I picked her brain about this a lot. 
Um, vacuum training is great. And that's something that all of us do when we all hammer. Are we all great with our vacuums? No, absolutely no. not. But I am here to tell you that they do help and they do work if you can do them properly and stay consistent with them. But in addition to that, pelvic floor therapy or work. Yeah. Um, and that's a very broad statement. Some, some of you thinking like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not urinating myself or anything like that. It's deeper than that. It's mm -hmm. the, literally that internal core set strengthening from your mm -hmm. upper abdominal all the way down to your lower abdominals. And if you're getting that with this specific, we just talk about that lower abdominal distension, I would say that's less about vacuum work and more about the internal pelvic floor therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a, a therapist that I recommend for my clients. She does everything online. She does an online assessment through FaceTime, gives them a program to do. And I have seen some of my master's clients with some pretty bubbled out lower abdominals and they look incredible. Mm -hmm. And where people go wrong here is the, the exercises are boring. It's like you're going into a ther physical therapy office and you're, you know, using a ball and bands and you're like, what is this actually doing for me until you start seeing it work? Right. Um, so that's what I would recommend. And then as well, just wearing a waist trainer, or a weight belt during your lifting. That way you're not putting tax on the core and, you know, opening up the core more or building the core, I should say. And then digestion, you know, mm -hmm. making sure that you're not loading up your um, macros with, you know, high fiber and really um, high vegetables and things like that. Uh, healthy foods can still be damaging. We just talked about this a few days ago on our refeed and, and cheat meal podcast. So making sure that you're choosing foods that digest well for you, that do not cause bloating and that don't cause that bubbled out effect. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with all of those things. And then I'm also going to add one uh, piece onto this because I think a lot of it, like you said, a lot of it is the strengthening of the other muscle. A lot of it's the digestion thing. Some of it is that's just where you carry fat. Uh, you know, a lot of women, we carry fat and underneath. That's our little mom pooch. That's that's supposed to be there for hormonal reasons. The same thing with um, lower back fat. Same thing. Some girls carry it there. I am a product of that. I'll be honest with you. I'm a product of that. Um, I've always, there's always been something I was self-conscious about. I always had a little bubble like underneath my belly button into my, my waistline, no matter how skinny I was, it was always there. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. I did cool sculpting and got rid of it. And I haven't, I haven't had an issue since. I have not had yeah. an issue since. So sometimes that's just where you carry fat. And that's where I carried fat. I carried fat right in that little lower abs and right on my lower back. And now, now that that's, I got that cool sculpted away, it's gone all the time. And I, I'll tell you what, even when I'm in off season, even when I'm at my heaviest, I don't have that little, that little bubble anymore. I don't have yeah. it. It's not there because yeah. I, yeah. I got rid of the fat. Yeah. And that's genetically where you hold it. And now it's that's interesting right. that you talked about this because I learned about this at Cuties. There's just that's some right. places where your body just does not want to drop fat. Mm -hmm. um, I have a girl, she's pretty young. She hasn't even stepped on stage yet. And genetically, her and her mother both hold this fat pack right on their tie-ins. Um, so she's like, well, what am I going to do Like when we get to stage and if I can't lean out? I'm like, we're going to do a few shows. You're going to see if you enjoy it. And when we're really battling for a pro card, if we feel like there's nothing that we can do about it with diet, food, exercise, and you want to go in cosmetically and get something done, that might be what you have to do eventually. Right. Um, right. Again, that's not something I want to do right now. That's just something that we'll yep. do and evaluate as we start climbing up in the ranks. But yeah, there are some things that just sometimes genetically you're holding it and you need to go take care mm -hmm. of it cosmetically. Not suggesting that. That's not what I'm saying. But yes. the more you get caught up in those ranks and if that is your trouble spot, it might be something you just have to yeah. look at getting done. Well, that's, that's the thing too. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, you got to realize everything has a plus and a minus. So, you know, I did that knowing that that was what was the issue, but to be, I haven't looked at this, but to be honest, if I was trying to have kids or something like that, that might not have been a very good idea for me to do, because again, that's hormonally just like where you're, where you're supposed to carry, you know, estrogen, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So, you know, if that was something that was in my plan, that may, that may not have been the right choice for me to do it again. I don't know if this is actually tied in. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, saying off the top of my head here, but you got to remember that everything you do, there's a plus, and there's a minus. So, yes. you know, you have to weigh that risk reward factor. Um, so if it's, if it's right for you, great. If it's not, don't do it. And even, even when I went and got the cool sculpting done, because I've always, you know, when I did this, this was during the pandemic timeframe. Um, and I've never been, an overweight person. It's never, that's never been a thing. And even she said to me when I went in, she's like, you have very little here. She's like, we're going to do like one treatment and that's it. If we do anything more than that, you're going to be like misshapen and all this kind of stuff. So you have to listen to those people as well. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not going to be a cure-all. It's not going to be a save-all. It's not going to do everything that you ever wanted. But for me, it was the right solution, right? So again, going back to 
be very educated about what you're going to do. We're not saying yep. go, we're not saying go, go do, do this if you're not ready for it, you know? And be, you did be, this be after years it. of competing, Correct. knowing right. that dieting to that extreme, it wasn't going away. Yes. And you knew that. So. Yes. And it was something I've had since I was young, you know, it's like, it just is what it is. And again, I go back to like, so back in the, Back in my day, <laughs> back in the, I know, back in the nineties and the early two thousands, we wore those freaking low ass jeans, like the, the ones that go Hip down hunters. to your pelvic yeah. bone. And so that would always pooch out. It always bothered me because all my friends had their flat stomach and I had this little, this little belly pooch thing going on. I could never wear those little teeny tiny. Thank God for high waisted like, pants nowadays. Oh my God. Thank God. <laughs> thank oh, God. thank God. <laughs> Please don't come back low rides. <laughs> I've been seeing it happen. I know. It's like the old, the old uh, Christina Aguilera dirty look, like. No, don't please no, no please <laughs> please no. Like <laughs> mom jeans, mom jeans all the way, mom yes. jeans all the way. I'm all yes. about the high waisted pants. <laughs> mom jeans, but not being a mom. Yes. <laughs> Me exactly. and Sean in the No Kids Club. Sorry. Yes, yeah, No Kids Club. <laughs> no Kids Club. <laughs> oh, but anyway, long story short, those are some, there's just, those are some things you can do for lower abs distension. So there you go. Yes, uh, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> yep. So there's one here that I think we do an entire topic on, and that's competition date essentials. So I'm not going to pull that up right now because I think we could do an actual podcast on that one. Perfect. Um, um, let's see. Do you carb cycle during prep? Do you carb cycle during prep? And my, my answer is yes, I do. How about you? Um, it depends. I mean, right now I'm not carb cycling. There have been preps, though, where I have carb cycled. Mm-hmm. Um I asked Jamie this prep to go a little bit more aggressive with me, which is why we bypass carb cycling. So it just depends. It depends on where you're at. You know, remember I came out of this last improvement season, more intuitive eating. So we didn't Mm -hmm. really have a good amount of data to like start a carb cycling. I kind of knew about where I was at and I just wanted to get aggressive from there. So it just depends. I I do carb cycling a lot with my athletes. We start with carb cycling and I do it for as long as we can. And then when we need to get low, we drop a high day. And I love that approach. It gives Mm -hmm. that athlete the first, you know, five to eight weeks, a high day day and something to look forward to and a little bit of energy and then we've got to pull it we got to pull it but it just depends but yes i've done carb cycling before and i have seen success and i've not done carb cycling before and see success success it just depends it all it depends on where the athlete's at and this goes back to why you want to be with your coach in the off season too because same thing i do carb cycling when i get into prep because i know it works for me and then we take it away once i go to off season you know what i mean so yep. um and we know that that's 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 going to work for me that's why jamie put it in a couple weeks ago when we started to cutting cutting stuff down um because my high days are still where they were when I was off season and then my low days are just a little bit lower, you know, so it helps to give you that variance, helps to give you, like you said, a little boost of energy. But at the end of the week, you're down the calories that you need to be down in order to be, be cutting. So right. it doesn't feel quite so extreme. Um, here's a question on related to this. Do you ever carb cycle people in off season? Do you ever do that? I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, I carb cycle in the off season to push food okay. on days I want them to train for the improvements we're trying to make for okay. people, but that's glutes. So if I want them to have a little bit more food on glute days to fuel that workout and to give them some extra nutrients to push for that workout and to recover the body, um, I will carb cycle because then yeah. I want to keep them a little bit leaner on the off days and then I'll give them two days of higher food. I also think that helps for the, for people to stay on track in their off mm-hmm. season. Um, if they have two higher days, you know, a lot of the girls are like, I don't think I really need a untracked meal because my food on my high days are so high. I could just kind of, you know, yeah. use these days as my untracked. So I do, I do utilize carb cycling for, for some clients and for that reason. So in, in that scenario, you're actually doing the opposite where we're not putting them into a deficit. You're actually putting them into a surplus, but putting a those, slight those, surplus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. So yes. it works the opposite way as well. And I would say that's, that's probably my scenario right now too. Like I went to dinner with, uh, with Dan last night and I was, I, I had the higher carbs. So I was able to eat what I wanted to eat. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I, I, I saved my, saved my macros for dinner. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> so, but you you're know. in prep yeah. and you're able yep. to still go out with, mm-hmm. with right now because of your higher food and stick to plan. That's right. That's right. So, um, so yeah, that's a good point too, as far as you can use it to bring your cat, your caloric intake over the week down or bring it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Absolutely. Makes sense. Um, let's see. This is a good one too. Difference between being lean and having better conditioning. Are these words interchangeable? So this is a, this is a hard one because the vernacular and the vocabulary and bodybuilding, it can be very confusing. It can be very <laughs> fluid. Yeah. So um, I would say that being lean and having better conditioning sometimes can be interchangeable, but sometimes Agreed. not, you know? Yeah. 
Um, conditioning, I think a lot of people get confused on that word. Um, conditioning is not necessarily being leaner. Sometimes conditioning comes from adding muscle, right? Being, or being fuller, right? That's right. That's right. So when we like, let's go back and think about um, the feedback that Tyler gave to Angelica at the Arnold saying that she needed to improve her conditioning in her glutes. She didn't need to be leaner in her glutes. She needs to add density into her glutes in order to get that to fill out. And that would improve her conditioning. And then when you take the difference between like bikini and wellness, it's the same thing. Wellness girls are not necessarily leaner than bikini girls. They just have more muscle. They have more pushing out that's making the skin thinner. Skin thinner? Yeah, I said it right. I was like, wait, did I say that right? The skin yeah. thinner um, and all of that. So it's more muscle that's improving their conditioning versus they're actually not less body fat. It's just more muscle pushing against that body fat and skin and all of that to make it look a little leaner. So that's the difference in conditioning. And it's really hard to understand what that means until you see like side by sides of this is better conditioning, this is worse conditioning. This is more density of muscle. This is less density of muscle. This is leaner. This is fatter, you know, all those kinds of things. So um, it, 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 they can be interchangeable, but they may not be as well. So anything additional um, to add on to that? No, I agree with everything with, with what you just said. Um, you know, that was that was my hardest thing when I first got into bodybuilding is like, what does leaner mean? What does mm -hmm. fuller mean? What does dense mean? Like, what does all these mean? And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes down to studying. Um, yeah. And just having a coach in your back pocket that can take your feedback and, and understand that for it. you. Yes. Um, I say this all the time, you know, you'll go down for feedback. And what you have to remember about the judges is that they are not coaches. That's right. So they might say the word that they need to be leaner, but mm -hmm. what they actually mean is that they want to see more pop and density. So that goes to just back to what your example was with Angelica. They didn't want to see less body fat. They mm -hmm. wanted to see more density. So she appeared more conditioned. And that's, that's right. where it takes a coach to look at the athlete, take the feedback from the judge. If the coach is there, hopefully they're backstage with the athlete getting the feedback, which has happened to me and Jamie many times where Jamie's like, do you mean you want her more conditioned or did you want her to be more full? Because those are yeah. two different things. On Monday, do I have her do more cardio or do I start feeding her into the next show? There's two yep. different ways we could approach this to get yes. the same conditioned look that you're describing. What do you actually want to see? That's so right. again, just like you said, these words are, are interchangeable in terms of how we use them in, in a fluid format, but they do mean different things. That's where the visual component comes in of what, what are we looking at and what are we describing and what are they actually asking for? So that is very complicated. It's a, this is a great question and it's something that you're going to have to study, you know, knowing what the athlete looks like and what their feedback was and then mm -hmm. us being able to describe it. Maybe that's a podcast we could do, Sean, of like, yes. this person was flat. This yep. person needs density. This person is dense, but needs to be conditioned. This yep. person is spilled. Like, what mm -hmm. does that look like? And what does that mean? That would be a yep. great podcast for us too. You need to jot that I down. Agree. <laughs> I agree. Jot that down. Okay. I, we, we've, got, we've got it recorded. So yes. we're good. <laughs> yeah. Here's our accountability. All of our yes. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but that, I mean, to, to your point too, I mean, that's why if your coach isn't at your show, I always tell people, I'm like, when you go to get your judging feedback, record it. Record it. So, yeah. So that we can listen to what the judge has actually said because you're, you're going to come back to us and they said, well, they said I needed to be leaner. Like, no, no, no. They said you need to be more conditioned. The There's game of difference. telephone. Exactly. Yes. There's a difference between being leaner and being more conditioned, you know? Yes. And, you know, going back to what I was talking about uh, earlier on the podcast about the show yesterday, the local show, the girl that won the overall, I think she needs to be better conditioned. When I mean, what I mean by that is she's got plenty of muscle. She needs to be leaner. Drop she needs fat. To, yes. She needs to drop some more body fat. And her goal is to go to nationals and stuff like that too um, next month. So, um, so she's in a really good spot right now to bring the body fat down a little bit more to go into junior USA's. That's where she wants to go. So again, we've talked about this before too. You don't necessarily need to be a hundred percent when you're at the local level, you need to be a hundred percent when you're at the national level. Right? So for her, my feedback, if I was sitting on the judging panel would be conditioning and it would be to come in a couple pounds leaner. So, and there's a difference there. There's a difference there. there she is doesn't, she doesn't need more muscle. Yeah, she doesn't need more muscle. She needs to just come in a little bit tighter. Yep. So, um, let's see. We kind of talked about this one before. We'll do one more because this kind of goes along with it. Um, so kind of like what we've been talking about today. 
in general. So um, can you chat about cardio? So do you give your clients specific methods or heart rate goals? What do you do for your clients? Do you give them specific things they should do? Or do it they depends. Give, do you give, yeah. It depends. Sometimes I just give them a caloric time. What I do have my clients do in season and off season is I have them track a lot of data. If you're a client of mine, TJ on here, you know how much I request of you. They are giving me how much they do, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is. They're telling me the modality, stair mill, elliptical, treadmill, whatever. They're telling me their average heart rate, and then they're telling me their active calories burned if they wear an Apple Watch. Why? Well, because heart rate is not a great depiction of work per person. Like I right. can't just tell everybody to, do, to get to 130 beats per minute. For mm -hmm. somebody that's more conditioned, it's impossible for them to get to 130 right. beats per minute. They're going to be mm -hmm. doing way high amounts of intensity just to even see 125. Or for another person, that feels like they're dying on 130 beats right. per minute. And that's not what I want either. So I don't love a heart rate goal. And I'll explain if I give them a heart rate goal, but actually what they should be feeling as far as intensity and work. I like to stick to more of time and active calories burned. So mm -hmm. in, a, in, in a cardio phase, let's assume we're talking about a prep phase, I'll have them start with 30 minutes, five days a week. And then they're telling me their active calories burned. Then when we start to see a plateau, maybe I keep them at 30 minutes, but I notice that their average calories burned is 125 to 150 per session. I'll then give them an active calorie goal. So, mm -hmm. hey, we're gonna stick to 30 minutes, but I need you to bump up the intensity a little bit. And instead of your average of 125 active calories burned, I wanna see 150 next week in all sessions. And that allows them to push a little bit more within the same time frame. So it really depends. I don't, like I said, don't love heart rate. I usually re remain with the active calories and a time. And for some clients, just a step count. Step count. Yeah. Some, yeah. I have some clients that are getting 20 to 25K steps a day because they live in cities and they're walking yep. everywhere. So their, their cardio can be a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, so it's very person dependent. And I will say for myself, I like to start with heart rate. So that kind of gives me a baseline to go from um, and then build it from there. Uh, a lot of times I'll have girls that have come to me that are doing really high intense cardio. And I'm like, we, we got to pull that back because the problem with that is that you're, you're burning all your energy now and you're not putting any of it into your training. You know what I mean? So we have to look at those kinds of things. But like you said, I mean, this happens to me when I'm in prep, I can start out and just walking, I can get my heart rate up. But by the time I'm in it, like a week, I can't get my heart rate up to, to save my life. And then the next, your thing know, yeah, next thing I know, I'm running. And for me, running is terrible. I hate it I for hate my running. hips and my, my yeah. knees and stuff like that. And it's really hard for me to get my heart rate up. So it, it, again, going between different modalities, I have a elliptical here at the house that's really um, high intensity as far as... Um, uh, What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Resistance. Resistance. So, yeah, so I can get my heart rate up fast on that without feeling like I'm like pounding the pavement running and things like that. So I'll use that to get my heart rate up. But again, we go through and we find all these, these pieces. It's like, okay, we start, we want to start you, like you said, we want to start you at 125 for your heart rate and see what we're doing at that point. You what know? does that and, feel like? Correct. You? Yes. Yeah. And then we can adjust it from there, you know? Yeah. Uh, again, going back to the it depends person, you know, for some people that 125 is going to feel like hell, you know, for other people, it's going to be them taking a walk, you know, right. so you have to, you have to understand that too. Like you said, the active calories and how much impact you're putting onto the body and things like that. So um, I don't specifically like to say you have to do this type of cardio. I just want to get the, the, the goal that we're getting to. So, Correct. you know, I know some people love that stair mill and stair master. I freaking hate that thing. I will, that is the last thing that I will do. I will run before I'll do the stair master, <laughs> the stair mill. I hate that. So <laughs> I'm like, I don't do so it. I'm, I can't do it because of my yeah. quads. Uh, so, like, yeah. so that's yeah, where yeah, I yeah. will tell someone yeah. and Kay, I don't want you to do this. Yes. Like we're trying to watch the leg balance. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want them doing bike or stair mill if we're trying to keep the quads at bay. Um, yep. But anything else, if, if that's not an issue, they have free reign to pick whatever modality they want as long as they're hitting yep. some high. Yep. Yes. And yeah, some of these things different. You know, yeah. some days you, you feel better on elliptical, some days you feel better on an inclined treadmill. That's okay. Listen to your body because yep. recovery is just as important as in prep and maintaining 100%. that. Absolutely. Yep. And that you and going back to what you're saying, going from, you know, hit cardio to steady state and things like that, all of those things make a difference too. Like I have some hit cardio right now, but I know once I get deeper into prep, that's going to go away. Yep. I know that. Because yep. there's going to be too much expenditure on my on my body. So yep. you, you use it where you can use it, which I can use it right now. But I, I know it's not going to stay there forever. It's just right. it's going to be too hard for me to recover from it. So absolutely. 
yeah. So those are, those are the things. It's, it's not, it's not like you have to do something specific. We just want a specific outcome from it. Yes. So we have to figure out, figure out how that's going to, how that's going to happen. So yeah. For that so athlete anyway. in particular. Correct. Yep. And that's how, you, and like you said, you get data, you, you just get data as much data as you can get. That's what's going to tell you how to get to the, to the required outcome. And again, going back to what we said at the beginning, that's why you want to have a coach during your off season as well as your prep because then you can get the data and then it makes it easier once you actually get into prep so that you can get those results faster. Yeah. I collect so. this data in season and off season. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. So you see how everything ties in together. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so um, with that, I think that's good for our questions for today. We got through a lot of them. We got through quite a, quite a few, but we still have a lot of them left too. So keep sending Perfect. them in. Be yeah, because we can build, like I said, we've got the one here for the com for the competition dates, essentials. We'll do an We just got two like, ideas for a new podcast. That, yep, Easy exactly. We did. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, and that's the thing. It's like we can dive more in depth into a lot of this stuff too. A lot of the stuff is just boom, boom, just giving you, again, a lot of this, it depends. But sometimes we go, we can go in and we can dive in and show you what the it depends is. You know what Correct. I mean? So send the questions in, ask them all, ask all way. There is no dumb question here. You know, like I said, I mean, some people are still on the old school methods. We got new school ways of finding solutions, you know, so go for it. Ask the questions away, you know? Um, yes. And uh, so we'll go ahead and wrap up this uh, this podcast for today, number thirty five, <laughs> and then uh, we'll get on with our our days today. Are you going to train? You're going to train today. I'm training today. I have a couple client okay. calls, peak week girls, Perfect. but other than that, yes, I'm training glutes today. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah Me same. Too. I'm training glutes yes. today. <laughs> Good luck. Same. Thank you. Yeah. The Thank only you. difference is I have to train with your trainer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a feeling that it's probably a little bit more difficult for you than it is for me. Probably, uh, yeah, and being his wife too. Well, I was going yeah, to say that. Do you know this? You're, so you're a coach. Blah, blah, blah. It, I'm like, it I don't always makes like training twenty four seven. I, don't I have eyes on know. Me. <laughs> it always makes me laugh because I'll like I'll say something to Dan about my training or my diet or whatever, and he's like, "I could train you." I said, "No, you can't. <laughs> no, you cannot." I was like, "We would kill each other." No, there's some days where Drew comes and gives me a cue, and I'm like. <laughs> Satan just comes out of my soul. I don't, I honestly, like I, give today. You, I give you huge props because there is no way that I could do it. I had no way I could do it. Um, yeah. You know, we're, and you're in business with him too. And all of that too. So there's that as well. Like Dan and I are in business together as well, but we both tackle different ends of the business. Like he has his things he's good at. I have the things I'm good at and Same. so forth. So it's just like, that's the boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. And it's just like, oh my goodness, that's that's enough for me. There's no way I could do it in the gym with him too. I that's don't know. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> Believe me. You like, can borrow him anytime you want to look at your form. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I was like, no, nah. I'm like, I'm good. Hey, but even that, I'm like, again, it's a different dynamic. Like when you're when you're husband and wife, it's a totally different dynamic. Oh, it is. It. it is. It is. I'm like, mm, no. Nope. I used to never let him do a thing. Now I'm more receptive, but I can yeah. still be better. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he's very progressive, which is good. Like when it comes to Dan, Dan's very old school, you know, he's a wrestler. So he's like old school wrestling, Matt, get on the floor, get dirty. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm like, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't so do that. People think I'm an intense coach. I'm like, wait till you're, if you ever get a taste of Drew, he's an intense coach. But I, listen, yeah. look at his, look at his track Results. record. I mean, it, it works. Results. So. Yep. But mm -hmm. it's, as his wife, sometimes I just want to... <laughs> I get it. I get it. And that's why God invented alcohol. <laughs> what, what do we get in prep, though? I know. Uh, no. Weed? Yeah. <laughs> okay, There's good. always something. There's always something. <laughs> we'll, we'll find a way. We'll find pure, a way. Pure nutrition. Where are you? <laughs> I know, right? God. Oh my god. And on that note, actually yesterday was 420, so we missed it, it sure by one was. day. We, we missed it by one day. I was telling that to Dan last night. I was like, it's 420. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is the athlete holiday. I know, <laughs> right? This is the prep holiday. I you know, it. if Arnold Schwarzenegger could do it, so can we. <laughs> That's it. Okay, Love he was it. successful. He sure was, sure is, still sure is. is exactly. Yeah. Not past tense. Uh, that's that's enough. Uh, that's enough anecdotal evidence for me. I'll take exactly. It. Yep. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, that was a great way to end the podcast. Um, Pretty much. Like, like, subscribe, comment, and smoke them if you got them. And we'll, we'll be back again next week. We won't have one this coming week because you're going to be traveling. That's why we're doing this ahead of time. So we'll be back again next week with our next episode. So yes. enjoy, you guys, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.